In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I made this animation, breaking down all the textures and effects so that you can apply them quickly and easily to your own work. I'm breaking down some more techniques influenced by this awesome video by Oddfellows. I've covered a few methods in a previous video, but this time we're going full on texture and grit in this edgy graphic design style that's been all the rage for a while. I started by making these style frames so that I had a reference for my animation. And I made these all in Photoshop. I wanted to try and capture the feeling of trying to force myself to relax when I'm feeling anxious and my mind having none of it. And I used the assets for this style frame and animation, which are the teeth, the pillbox, and this plastic texture from this video sponsor, Yellow Images. They are a huge library of exclusive object mockups, graphic assets, textures, fonts, and 360 PNGs. I animated this in multiple passes starting with an animatic and After Effects. I started by putting those full style frames under some music. I got a music track, cut it up a bit, and laid some more glitchy sound effects at different speeds so it sounded a bit more chaotic. I then tidied up that comp a bit more, so I pre-comped all the music into one comp, and then pre-comped each style frame into its own comp as well, so that I don't end up with hundreds of layers in this one composition. The next step was to add our main animation, which was the teeth. This frightening teeth toy model is part of Yellow Images PNG Image 360 collection. And what that is, is a ton of high quality 3D models with perfectly cut out transparent backgrounds where you can rotate it in browser and download just the stills that you want. Now I want it spinning, so I downloaded 16 images of it rotating at this angle. In After Effects, all we need to do is import them by going to File, Import, finding those images, and we only need to select the first one and make sure that PNG sequence is selected. And because these are all labeled sequentially, they end with 01, 02, 03, 04, After Effects will interpret them as frames in a sequence. And let's choose Create Composition as well and select Import. Now we've got this image sequence over here. And when we play it, we've got our spinning teeth. That's spinning a bit too fast for me. So let's right click, go to Interpret Footage, Main, and change that to 15 because we'll be animating this at 30 frames per second. You can use 12 if you're animating at 24. And now we've got our spinning teeth. Let's rename that comp and then place it where we need to in each comp. So in scene four, I'm just going to drag it in and scale it down a touch and reposition that based on our style frames. There, that looks pretty good. I scaled that down and duplicated that a bunch of times for scene one. And for scene three, we're gonna do something slightly different. Now I've imported those same stills, not as an image sequence, but just as images into this folder over here. So let's drag them all into this comp and then scale them all down to around, I think 35%. Let's place those in the middle. Now to get them to create this effect where they stack on top of each other and shrink down here, we need to do a few things. First, we need to create an animation just using these stills. So let's select them all and trim them down to just two frames by holding Alt and right square bracket on our keyboard when our playhead is just before the two frame mark. And then we need to select them and right click keyframe assistant and sequence layers. Let's choose OK. And now if we play it back, we've got our spinning image sequence. Now it's sequencing these in the wrong order that we want. Our teeth are spinning the wrong way and the top layer is the start of the sequence. If your sequence is the wrong order, you can undo that with Control Z. Now make sure you select the first frame that you want in your sequence first. So I'm gonna select the bottom one, hold shift, click the top one, and then right click keyframe assistant sequence layers. Now we've got our teeth spinning the right way. And to get this effect from our style frame where they're stacking on top of one another, all we need to do is drag out the back end, the duration of these layers. And now we've got them stacking on top of one another. And I've also got a pretty neat trick to shrink them down as well. Now we could do it by clicking on each of these and scaling them down individually, but that won't be as consistent and it'll take longer. So my method is to select each layer over here and then using the pick whip tool, parent it to the layer beneath. And let's do that for all of these. So now they're all parented. So if we were to select one in the middle and scaled it down, it would scale down all the layers on top of it. So now what we can do is we can select all of our layers, open up scale with S on our keyboard. And then if we turn down the scale of all of them at the same time, they will scale relative to each other. 89 seems good here. Each layer is 11% smaller than the one on top of it. Wonderful, now we've got our spinning layered spiral effect. Now for shot two, we don't have any rotating teeth, but we do have this pillbox mockup. And of course, we're gonna get that mockup from Yellow Images, which has over 40,000 high quality premium mockups and 360 images like the one we used earlier, and a creator store full of amazing graphic assets like lettering, icons, illustrations, pattern textures, presets, brushes, UX and UI kits, and more. There's even more, there is. They have hundreds of mockups just for pharmaceuticals alone. So I downloaded this one, which comes as a beautifully layered editable Photoshop file. And to add our own graphics, we just need to double click on this smart object, which is labeled box design. And here we can add our own text, import our own images and logos. And then as soon as we save this file for the smart object, it updates in the main file. 
You can also easily edit the color of the pills, add foil and holographic effects to your box. All the mockups are in incredibly high resolution. This one's 4000 by 4000 pixels and all have incredible lighting and shadows as well. And of course, transparent backgrounds. If you're going to design something for a client, like let's say a logo, if you show them what it looks like on a business card or a t-shirt or my personal favorite, a private jet, you're going to blow them away. Yellow images have a great subscription plan or you can pay individually for any item you want as well. And just for you, I asked Yellow Images for a 30% discount and they gave me 100 coupons that you can claim today. These coupons are limited, so it's first come, first serve. Get your 30% off with the coupon Ben Marriott 30 Links in the description. So I saved this as a transparent PNG, brought that into After Effects, and then into this shot, and then just scaled it up slightly over the duration. And that's actually the majority of the animation done for this project. The rest is 90% textures and effects. And I wasn't too worried about the colors looking pretty bad here because that's all gonna be recolored next with our effects. So in shot one, I'm gonna move our style frame up to the very top of our effect stack so we can quickly flick it on and off as reference to our design underneath. And then I'm gonna pre-comp all of our teeth because this is getting too many layers for me down here. And then I've kept one in the middle, which will be our filled in teeth here. Now the background is lighter here. So let's create a white solid for our background by pressing control Y selecting white and putting that at the bottom. And now let's add a new adjustment layer by going up to layer, new adjustment layer, and let's rename that effects because we always label our layers. And first of all, let's add the effect tint. Tint recolors the artwork in a duotone fashion. So we wanna leave our black mapped to black, but we want our white to be mapped to our purple color. So I'm gonna turn on our style frame and just eye drop that on an area that looks to be pure white. Now you can see it's recoloring everything underneath, all the whites of this purple, and then they get darker until they're black. I'm also gonna add a hue and saturation effect because I want the gums of these teeth to be darker. So I'm gonna put that, first of all, above our tint effect and change the channel color to red and decrease the lightness to maybe around minus 60. And it's important that we do this before our tint effect because if we do it after our tint effect, there's barely any result because there's not much red to alter here, everything's all purple. So we put it above the tint in our effect stack so it makes the red darker and then remaps the colors. Now let's add the effect noise. Again, above our tint effect and let's pump this all the way up to 40%. That's gonna get it really noisy. And this is gonna give us a lot of that scanned and photocopied gritty look. And then we should increase the contrast. I'll add a curves effect and then just add an S curve to increase the contrast. And we can push this really far. I think that's pretty good. And we can check against our style frame as well. I think that's looking pretty close. Maybe it needs to be a bit darker. And then one final effect I'm gonna add is posterized time. And I'm gonna set the frame rate to 15 because that's half of our 30 second frame rate. If you're in a 24 frames per second comp, maybe turn it down to 12. And this is just so that all the animation underneath has a slightly staggered look, which more mimics non-digital animation. And we'll slow down how our noise is animated as well. So here's what this comp looks like now. If you're finding these techniques useful, please give this video a like. It really does help the channel and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos videos every week. Now we just need to copy this adjustment layer effects and paste that into our other comps. There it's starting to look much closer now. Now we could have pasted that adjustment layer on this main comp here, but then when we're inside each individual comp, we'd have to come back to this comp to see the final result. So in this case, it's just easy to put it inside the scene. In the next pass, I added some additional animation. I added these circle layers into shot two, just increasing their scale slightly. And I also imported these star shapes as shape layers and just have them increasing and decreasing their scale. So it looks like they're sparkling. And I also added the effect gradient ramp to each of them as well. So each of them have this gradient which they have in the style frames. And then in shot four, I added this text animation. So I've got five copies of the word relax and the type is set to no fill and a one pixel white border. And then I made a copy of that, changed the fill to white, and then every few frames moved its position up to the next level of text. So it moves up the screen. Now I always get asked about the typeface. So this one is called Nimbus Sans Extended. And don't let them know I told you this, but Yellow Images also has a huge library of typefaces. But now it's time to add the texture. I made a bunch of looping plastic textures for this animation. And all the plastic images I got was from this pack on Yellow Images. And I thought that this cling wrap texture really invoked, certainly in me, a feeling of anxiety because I cannot stand it when you're using cling wrap and it folds over on itself and then you try desperately to separate it and try to save it, but it's too late and you know you're gonna have to start all over again. For this first looping plastic texture, I'm just using one image. If we zoom out, we can see it's one image. I've got a new version of it every four frames and I'm just moving its position. So it bounces around and looks like a new piece of plastic. And when it's played back, it looks like this. So to fill up the comp, I'm just gonna select those, duplicate them and then drag them over to the end. Let's recolor them while we're here. And because each shot is only one second, I probably only need to duplicate it once. But let's do it again anyway to fill up another one second. There, 
For the second plastic loop, I used four different images of the plastic wrap that aligned in a straightish sort of shape. And then for this one, I made a corner out of the plastic wrap just by stacking two straight images of plastic on top of one another. And I use my old faithful trusty paper texture here, which I show you how to make from scratch in my looping textures tutorial. So in scene one, I added that first plastic sheet texture to the background and adjusted this contrast with the curves effect. I also duplicated that looping texture, placed it under our teeth grid and then used it as an alpha mat. So now this texture is only visible where our teeth were and I inverted it as well. So it becomes mostly black. And then I've got two copies of our plastic wrap texture just on the very edges here. And then our paper texture on top of everything. So we get these little speckles all over. I copied that paper texture and the cling wrap to all the other scenes and then just moved where the cling wrap was. So it's in different corners in each shot. And on this next pass, I added the shading. So here's how I did it on these circles. Now I've got only two layers of shading on here. I'm gonna hide that first one and rebuild it. So the first circle we've got is the one closest to our box, the smallest one. And I recolored that black and then I duplicated that, colored it white. And then I grabbed my pen tool and made sure the tool crates mask is selected so we don't draw another shape. And then I'm gonna draw this kind of blob shape, which goes in and out of the circle. So about half of this white version is visible and then press F on our keyboard to bring up our mask feather. And let's drag that out somewhere really large, maybe 500 pixels. And now we get the smooth gradient shading in this circle. I used the same process for this wider circle, but I added a few more masks there because I wanted a few more different patches of shading around the edges as well. And then to those two shading layers, I just added some rotation keyframes. I think that's a really cool effect for barely any keyframes. And I use that same feather technique to create these gradients in the bottom of scene one and behind each layer of teeth in scene three. And on the very final pass, I added some tiny details. So I added the word please to the end of shot three. So it reads as please relax. And then in shot four, we missed our smiley from the style frame. So I added these smiley faces on the left and then just parented these filled smiley faces to our relaxed text so they follow it as it moves up. I also added a few cheeky glow effects to that main relaxed fill. And then a few kind of random places, I added an adjustment layer with Gaussian blur selected. So our background gets blurred for a few frames now and then. And I thought that just added a bit more randomness to the scene as if something messed up when those images were scanned. And then on one final adjustment layer, I've got near the very top, I added the effect transform. And on the position of that transform property, I added a wiggle expression. So now this will move randomly two pixels every seven frames. And that just adds the subtlest little shake as if this was being run through a film reel. And then just so it didn't move too far away from the center and we get some edges being revealed because of that shake, I've increased the scale to a massive 101%. And here is the final animation using all sorts of grit and texture techniques. And of course the wonderful assets from Yellow Images. Now the project file is available to download for free down in the description. Now I can't give away all the assets of course, so I've slimmed down that project file. So it's just the effects and the shapes so that you can use some of them in your own work and adjust them to create something new. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.